Next, we're going to go over inserting page breaks. With this document, I want a page break to occur where I want them to occur, not where the text actually falls. In order to create a page break in this particular document, I want it to be here at Malaria. I'm going to go ahead and turn my Show Hide Marks back on so that I can see what's going on. Under Page Layout, I'm going to select Breaks. And I, like I said, I want it to be a page break. So I will select Page Break. While we are here, you'll notice that I also have Column, Text Wrapping, I have Next Page, Continuous, Even Page, Odd Page. These are the different options that I have. So from here, what I'm going to select is Page. You'll notice that I now have a page break appearing at the end of page 1. And it shifts all my document information to the next page and down through the end. There are other ways that I can insert a hard page break as well. I can click here in front of Preventative Options. I can hold down my Control key and hit Enter. And you'll see that that also puts in a page break. I can scroll through and decide that I want a hard break at Insurance for Travelers. I place my insertion point in front of Insurance for Travelers. I hold the Control key down and hit Enter. I could have just as easily selected Breaks and then Page again. You can just as easily remove a page break. Since I have the show hide marks on, I can see exactly where my page breaks occur. I can select this page break and hit delete. And that removes that page break. It's that simple. Then I can come back and decide that I wanted it really here in front of medical kit and personal items. So I'll do control enter to insert it again. Now that I have my document in multiple pages, let's put page numbers in. From here, I'm going to select Insert. Once I have Insert placed in here, then I'm going to... Now that the Insert ribbon is open, I can select the drop-down at Page Number. I can determine where I want my page number to appear. In this particular document, let's put it at the bottom and let's center it on the page. So I'll come and select the one that I want. I would prefer to have plain number 2. So I'll select plain number 2 and you'll see that it places my page number in the correct location. Once I have the page number where I want it, I simply can either click close header and footer to close or you can click inside the body of the document and it will close it as well. Now that I have my document formatted the way I want and I've included page numbers, now I need to include a header. To do that, I'm going to come back to the Insert tab. Then I'm going to select Header. And from here I can choose where and which header I want to use. On this particular one, I'm going to choose blank. You'll notice it gives me a section to where I can type. In this one, let's type in healthy traveler. I can hit my spacebar or my tab and I can add additional information. If I wanted to include the date and time, more document information, I could do that here. I want my Healthy Traveler to have a different font color. So I can come back to my home ribbon because it's affecting what I currently am typing. And I can select what color I want my header. You'll notice here I have a green tab. That's my header and footer that I'm working in. I can move to my footer location. 
by simply selecting Go to Footer. And I can change its color as well. Now that I've completed that, I will click Close Header and Footer, and my information has been changed.